Hello YouTubers. Today we'll be changing out the brake pads on my wife's 2015 Buick Encore and I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get after it. On this model of Buick, the handbrakes are activated on the rear wheels only. Since we'll be working on the front brakes, I'll set the handbrakes so we don't have to worry about the vehicle rolling off the jack. You may wish to check your owner's manual, but typically the jack points on most American vehicles are indicated by notches along the rail as shown here. This factory scissor type jack has a couple of indentions with a saddle in the middle. The saddle fits into the notch in the rail. Screw the jack up to and around the notch if possible using your fingers. While the vehicle is still firmly on the ground, loosen all the lug nuts. This is an especially important point if you experience a flat tire away from home where you may not be on level firm ground. Loosening the lug nuts now eliminates the ability of the car to roll off the jack when the vehicle is fully lifted and because I am at home I'm going to utilize my breaker bar for better leverage. At this point I will continue to raise the jack and I check every so often to see if the tire will rotate. When I can spin the tire with my hand it has been jacked high enough. Again, because I am at home, I am integrating the use of my safety stands and I place one under the rail alongside the jack. Continue to remove the lug nuts. I like to save the top lug nut for last so I can press in on the bottom of the wheel and take some strain off the threads. The wheel is lifted off the lugs and set aside where it won't roll away. We are going to remove two bolts holding on the caliper. Here's the top bolt and here's the bottom. I am able to loosen and remove these bolts by bumping the heel of my hand against the socket wrench handle. Note that there is no sign of old thread lock here. Repeat the operation on the bottom caliper bolt. Slide this assembly sideways off the rotor as shown. This is the brake piston and you can see it is extended. Eventually the piston will be retracted to allow room for the new brake pads. Position the caliper where it won't fall and damage the rubber brake lines. Grasp and pull outward on the outer brake pad to remove. Note the ears on each side of the pad that fits into the metal clip. Repeat for the inner pad, pressing inward to remove. Only on the inner pad will you find this scraper that makes a screeching noise on the rotor when the pad is worn and requires replacement. Let's examine other differences in the pads. The outside pad has these extra ears which won't allow them to fit on the inside of the caliper. As shown earlier, the inside pad is the only one that contains the scraper. Flipped over, you can continue to see the differences. To remove the rotor, this bracket must first be removed. Just like the caliper, it has a top and bottom bolt, albeit much more heavy duty and as you will see, a bit more difficult to remove. I began by hoping I could use a rubber mallet on my ratchet handle to loosen these bolts. I quickly switched to my breaker bar. Now if you have a powerful impact wrench, this would be the time to break it out. You can see here that even using extensive torque, this bolt was stubborn. With my back turned toward the car and pulling straight up with a breaker bar, I managed to break this bolt loose. Now 
note that this bolt has some factory installed orange colored thread lock. The bottom bolt is removed in the same fashion. Note the position of the bracket as it is removed. Lastly, this Torx screw holds on the rotor and must be removed. I recommend having your front rotors turned on a lathe with each brake pad change to avoid a shimmy in the steering wheel or vibration in the brake pedal. Depending on the thickness remaining on your rotor, your local automotive store like O'Reilly's may choose to turn your rotors, which removes a thin layer of metal, or if they're too thin, replace them. I left my rotors overnight to have them turned. The cost is about $10 each compared to $30 each to replace them. On reassembly, align the rotor with the screw hole underneath and replace the torque screw. This screw has some green paint on it that aligns with a mark on the hub to let you know the screw is tight. The bracket is oriented correctly and repositioned. The top bracket bolt is screwed in place and then the bottom. My regular socket wrench is used to initially tighten both bolts. Then the socket is switched to my breaker bar for final tightening. These metal clips are used to reduce brake pad chatter. You may or may not get new ones with your brake pad order. They are installed as follows and the ears of the brake pads slide into these channels. One thing the sharp-eyed viewer will notice is that I installed the pad with a scraper on the outside of the bracket instead of the inside simply because I wasn't paying attention. After completion, I had to remove the wheel again on this side to fix it. Comparing the old inside pad to the new, I take note of the circular mark created by the piston so that I can apply a liberal coat of CRC anti-squill material to the back of the new pad in the same circular pattern. I do not recommend this brand as it is messy and you will need to allow 15 to 30 minutes of dry time after its application. As we set this pad aside to dry, locate your brake's master cylinder and remove the cap. If you don't recognize the term master cylinder, just locate the place where you would add brake fluid. Since most folks get their car serviced at a Jiffy Lube style location, the brake fluid is an item they routinely fill to the top. We are going to retract the caliper piston next, and this will cause the fluid level to rise in the reservoir and perhaps spill over the top. Wrap a towel around this area just in case, as this fluid is caustic to paint. The caliper is flipped around and relocated. I set one of the old pads in place to protect the face of the piston from the pressure of the C-clamp shown here. The back side of the clamp presses against the far side of the caliper as I begin to apply pressure which in turn presses the piston back into its housing and effectively allows more room for the increased width of the new pads. 
Note the increased fluid level inside the master cylinder reservoir. I continue to turn the handle on the C-clamp until A, the piston won't retract any further, or B, the piston is flat against its housing. The CRC material is tacky now, so the inside pad is installed in the bracket. Both front pads on this side of the car have now been installed. The caliper is rotated and carefully placed around the new pads, trying not to touch the CRC material until the caliper is in its final position. The earlier operation of retracting the piston to its maximum depth helps with this part. The top and bottom caliper bolts are replaced and tightened. The car's wheel is replaced and the lug nuts hand tightened for the moment. Snug up the lug nuts while the wheel is still in the air. The safety stand is removed and the jack is lowered until the tire touches the ground. At this point the lugs are fully tightened and the jack is lowered and removed. Be sure to gently pump the brakes before driving. This action causes the brake fluid to return to its normal level. Pumping the brakes now also causes the caliper piston to press against your new pads prior to driving the vehicle. When finished, replace the cap on the master cylinder and remove the towel. And this project is complete.